The COVID-19 pandemic has forced entrepreneurs across the country to adapt to ever-changing restrictions, uncertainty about the future, and shifts in consumer behavior. They're reimagining and in some cases setting bold new directions for their businesses. They've had to pivot like a boss. Lunenburg is a quaint town along Nova Scotia's south shore. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and home port to the world-famous schooner Blue Nose 2. It's also where entrepreneur Alex Pittman manages his father's business, Mickey's Pit Stop, and his own business, Alex's Chill and Grill. Well, it's kind of a place where, you know, you can come in and wash your car and get something good to eat. And uh, they kind of do, you know, that summer fun. Um, a lot of people like to do that sort of thing, you know, with a cool classic car, you know, get a burger and a milkshake and wash their car. My kind of passions were like the food industry and automobiles. And so I kind of worked right, you know, out of school in the food industry, everything from cooking to, you know, food service. But my side hobby or passion was automobiles. Being an entrepreneur was an unrealized dream until he lost his sight at the age of 30 due to diabetic retinopathy. I went from, you know, perfect vision to zero vision very quickly. And I think lose my eyesight made me really realize that, that life is short and why not just every day do as much as you can um, to, to see a dream through. <laughs> what do you think of the placement of these picnic tables currently? I love it. I love it. It's close enough to the restaurants, close enough to the road. Everybody feels like they're part of something. It's cool. I have a, a great family. They all, you know, are, are hardworking people too. And so, you know, I, you know, they were more than willing to help. My name is Michaela Kelly Sharan. I am Alex's sister. My brother Alex is a very tenacious, determined and driven individual. So it's not surprising to me that not only did he have no fear in jumping into running a business and owning a business, for him to do as well as he's doing doesn't shock me at all. I mean, that's just Alex. Thank you for calling Alex's Chill and Grill. How can I help you? Absolutely, yes. We have all beef grill dogs for sure. I don't think there's anybody that works any harder than Alex, honestly. He just works his butt off. <laughs> he does. And I think what drives him, Alex, is... He loves his restaurant. He, he loves the car wash. I always say it's eight, eight days a week, 27 hours a day. <laughs> and I have two young uh, daughters as well right now, so it's extra busy. <laughs> when the pandemic struck, the dine-in restaurant was new. It was a, a scary time. I'm the type of person, though, especially with a, you know, some of the things I've been through, that that makes me fight harder, faster, more. Um, so when that happened, we were told as an example, you know, I got the notice, time to close down a restaurant. I literally had just finished building a restaurant like maybe a few months before. <laughs> so it was like, oh, <laughs> go through all that and then, and then be forced to shut down, but all, for obvious reasons. So, but I knew then right away, like, I, I'm going to do something that I think our locals need, which is I'm going to start to offer delivery. So, I, you know, that'll say, make, life gives you lemons, make lemonade. A two-hour drive away in Halifax, another entrepreneur, Fundmetric CEO Mark Hobbs, was pondering his own pandemic pivot. Fundmetric is a uh, well, it's a data ecosystem uh, to help nonprofits and charities raise more money using artificial intelligence. What we really want to do is help uh, people connect with the causes they care about. But the, the causes that they care about uh, are often under enormous pressure. They're under pressure to do more, um, and they're under pressure to raise more money so that they can have more of an impact. And so our real goal is to help uh, those organizations create personalized communications and personalized impact reporting that will inspire donors to both understand what their donations did, but also what is possible. Mark has cerebral palsy, which he says helped prepare him for his life as an entrepreneur. One of the things about having a disability is you, you pick up kind of two skills. One is the ability to overcome adversity and sort of deal with 
things uh, not going your way, which is very helpful when it comes to running a, you know, an entrepreneurial venture or business. And then the other one is you, you learn how to learn, I think, at a, in a different way. My name is Rachel Crosby. I'm the VP of Operations and Strategy here at Fundmetrics. I think that this company is Merck. Like it's his heart and his soul and um, how he sees things. He's big on empowerment, um, lifting people up um, and not sort of a, a top-down approach, which I really appreciate it. And um, he's extremely inspiring. Fundmetric employs close to a dozen people and has clients worldwide. Business has been phenomenal for Fundmetric. We had been growing with some of the largest American institutions like Texas Tech University, Kent State University, Oregon State had all come on within the last uh, two years of, of uh, you know, prior to the pandemic. Back then, client communication typically happened face to face. It's a lot of getting on planes. It's a lot of um, that type of work. And that's what we knew. When the pandemic hit, the way Fundmetric did business had to change, but there were many unknowns. We didn't know when we were going to get back to the office. We didn't know. Um, what a lot of our customers were going to do because a piece of, of fundraising at a certain level is, is in person. Um, and no one quite knew how Zoom was going, to, was going to translate. So I think like everybody, we, we knew we had to just sort of adjust, accept, and, and persevere. A love of baking began early for Jenna White, owner of Jenna's Nut-Free Dessertery, located in Fredericton, New Brunswick. I absolutely have always loved baking. My family has always been big on food. And when we were kids, my mom and my grandmas both took the time out of their days to teach me and my sisters how to bake and how to do different things in the kitchen. I've always had a dream of owning either a bakery or a restaurant. As the kids were growing up, she was always making their cakes and any sort of family event, so she was always creating a new thing. I'm Kiri Arnett, and I'm Jenna's long-term friend. Jenna's baking, uh, it is delicious, um, scrumptious, it's creative, it's pleasing to the eye. Yet it took a life-changing event to give her the push she needed to start her own baking business. I lost my eyesight uh, about four or five years ago. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and postural orthostatic tachycardia, uh, all caused by the Ehlers. My postural orthostatic tachycardia ultimately was the cause. I lose consciousness. The blood flow stops to my brain, and that just happened so many times. I started to uh, have damage to the optical nerve. Losing my eyesight was a huge change. I decided I had nothing to lose. As a first step, she decided to try selling her baked goods at a farmer's market. Here in Fredericton, the Boys Farmer's Market is a pretty fantastic market. It's well known uh, and it really wasn't easy to get into at the time at all. Around the same time, Jenna experienced another health challenge. After I lost my eyesight, I was lucky enough to develop anaphylaxis in my 30s. We weren't able to eat whatever we wanted to having only nut-free foods in the house. Jenna switched to nut-free baking, a niche that finally, after eight years of trying, won her a place at the market. Not only are we nut-free, we're actually all natural, so we don't use artificial flavors, we don't use chemicals or preservatives. I don't use a ton of sugar, I don't have to, because we're not using that artificial flavoring or those inferior ingredients that you try to cover up with the sugar and the sweetness in your desserts. Jenna's cakes, cookies and sweets were a market success. We've had really great reception. People seem to really enjoy our food. Customers seem to come back week after week. Then the pandemic hit and the Boyce Farmer's Market shut down for months. I think it was 
soul crushing for all of us. We were really young as a company at that point. We were just getting our groove. I definitely had a little pity party uh, and wondered what in the world was going to happen. Is everything done? Am I going to be able to reopen? Like, how is this even going to work? Pivot Like a Boss will return. Welcome back to Pivot Like a Boss. Small businesses have been particularly hard hit by the pandemic. For Alex, it's been like one long roller coaster ride. It's been an ever changing environment. There you go. The pivot to takeout worked well for his restaurant. I think people really enjoyed that we stayed open. You know, we had all our safety protocols up. Um, you know, we were offering delivery, and it wasn't long before I think like, locally people really depended on us. My nephew had a big red Chevy truck, like big jacked up, huge. <laughs> so we started delivering in that and calling it the apocalypse mobile. <laughs> but along with the pandemic successes came some difficulties. Right away, stock, just trying to get certain products, like everything changed. The price of like fresh beef, for example, went through the roof. You know, kind of have to spend all this money on things like all the plexiglass and signs and everything. Had to figure out how to change to keep all social distancing, how to keep everyone safe, staff and customers. Everything going okay so far? Yeah. Gotcha. Our stock arrived on time? Managing staff through the pandemic has um, been, been a challenge. Um, luckily, I have great staff. I say we're all friends with each other as staff. We're all each other's psychiatrists in a way, too, um, to help each other through like the harder moments and be there for each other. The restaurant did very, very well through everything. Lucky, I mean, not many businesses can say that. You know, it'd be easy to get defeated under all this, all these changes and pressure and difficulties. Um, my logic was if we just stand strong and keep, keep doing everything we can every day by day by day, you know, we'll prevail and see it through. Back at Funmetric, Mark and his team had to adjust to working remotely. The team at Funmetric is so important to uh, accomplishing what we do. The moment you um, can't turn to your left or right and talk to, you know, your your lead developer, your lead product person, it was a bit of a change for us. In one way, it provided uh, more thought out conversations. Keeping collaboration communication and morale strong was more important than ever. We dealt with it as a team, but I couldn't have got through it without having a great staff uh, behind me. Mark, he is the most resilient human being I have ever met. He's just a pillar of strength. Like any anytime fear creeps in, Mark beats it away, you know? He's just such a pillar of strength for everyone on the team. Before the pandemic, we always cared about our employees uh, to the point where we know sort of their family situations and we try and accommodate. So when people have problems, when they need to pick up the kids, we provide that. And that's simply, I think, the way modern businesses have to work. Fund Metrics clients remained a priority. The Associated Press just reported that one in three charities are probably in financial jeopardy uh, due to the pandemic. When your customers need you, you need to be there. And that's, that's number one for us. Everything had to go digital and we're a, uh, we were really leading the way in some key areas of digital transformation for uh, our clients. Um, so that was accelerated and was sort of fun to watch. They also found a way to give back. There are charities out there when the pandemic hit that didn't have uh, giving pages. And there are companies who charge hundreds or thousands of dollars a month for that you know, service. So we made it free for anybody who couldn't, uh, who couldn't afford it. 
Meanwhile in Fredericton, the first pandemic lockdown in 2020 gave Jenna a lot of time to think about her business. I was trying to figure out how, if for some reason in the future something like this happened again or this kept going on, how we could make a viable business that was actually still providing something that people needed and wanted. She came up with the idea to make natural, nut-free baking mixes and stone ground flour. By doing that, we kind of allow ourselves to be considered essential because we're providing a baking product, something that people prepare at home. And then that kind of led to, well, if we're going to do that, why don't we take a look at doing our own flour? To have that ambition to start something so huge in the middle of a pandemic is just mind boggling and that you can keep your sanity through it all is truly, you know, an admiration for sure. One of the mixes Jenna decided to produce was Bannock in honor of her Métis heritage. So Bannock is a traditional uh, indigenous fry bread. Uh, you can cook it on the stove with some oil or you can do it how I grew up doing it, which is on the fire on a stick, which is my absolute favorite way. So to me, that is <laughs> creating something really special. Financing help from two entrepreneurial organizations, Planet Hatch and All New Egg, enabled Jenna to get a physical location for her business. So that's kind of how we pivoted. And then we had the space, we figured we'd continue with the bakery in this location. And since we had a huge commercial kitchen, we added in the breakfast and lunch menu. So you'd like a Caesar. Mm -hmm. And what would you like? I'm going to have a cold pork. Cold pork panini? Converting the space was a lot of work. It was in rough shape. So we completely gutted the space. Uh, it's got new walls, new ceilings, floors. We also had a beautiful mural done that was done by a local Indigenous artist, Natalie Sapier. So that was really cool too, because she was able to take some of my heritage. Jenna's husband, three children, and her extended family and friends helped with the reno. I've been really lucky and we've had tons of support from both of our families. Jenna's Nut Free Dessertery officially opened in the spring of 2021. I have worries and doubts, but this is something that I believe wholeheartedly in. It's something that I have poured countless hours, um, blood, sweat, and as of two weeks ago, there were a few tears in there too. Um, and it's really come out exactly how it was in my head, which is kind of crazy. Um, and I mean, I'm not sure there's a whole lot of people that think it's a great idea to start a cafe or a bakery or a restaurant in the middle of a pandemic, but it's not going to last forever. Pivot like a boss, we'll return. You're watching Pivot Like a Boss. As restrictions ease, business at Mickey's Pit Stop and Alex's Chill and Grill is better than ever. Managing through COVID was tough, but for Alex, it's been worth it. So many customers have, you know, come and ordered food or called or, or taken advantage of our services and then thanked us personally, you know, thank you for, for staying open. You know, for they, they recognize how difficult it is to, to you know, to do these things, um, you know, in the current time. And, and that's been the one that's been, you know, motivates all of us when customers truly, sincerely are thankful that we've stayed, we've stayed there, and we're there to provide the service that they are familiar with. Back in Halifax, Mark is looking forward. We want to be in every single uh, charity. I mean, we want to see a world where, where empathy is more widespread. Um, and we think that nonprofits and the work they do is a wonderful way to uh, sort of spread, spread empathy. And it's not just the way he runs his business that's changed. I was so focused on building this company um, that I actually think that I I had I had stopped listening 
to some key inputs about what I needed. Um, so, uh, again, speaking very concretely, I lived in, uh, well, I guess it was a nice place, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't ideally set up for someone with a disability. And I had never taken the time to investigate getting myself in a, in a space that actually would work for me. I was able to, to physically uh, move and to start really paying attention to things like my health. In Fredericton, Jenna is enjoying the success of her business expansion. It was hard to, to keep looking forward, right? Like that's that's the trick. Like you gotta see past the crap right in front of you because eventually it will move. And if you've got that plan to keep going forward, then there's usually something good on the other side. I have three children. For me, it's really important to show them that it doesn't matter what happens. If you pick yourself up and you keep trying and you go for what you believe in, good things will happen. Host, Laura Bain. Producer, Wendy Purvis. Videographer and editor, Andrew Pickup. Freelance camera, Dave Stewart. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Audio post, Mark Phoenix. Graphics, Andrew Antonello. Senior producer, Michelle Dudas. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.